So this is all based on a true story that I experienced myself in the emergency room, but some details are changed for patient privacy, of course. So this patient came in the ambulance for severe nose bleeding for at least one hour that did not stop. And I estimate that he had lost at least half a liter because his hands and shirt were soaked with blood. So the doctor was seeing him in the ER and he asked, are you taking any blood thinners? His nose was clogged with blood. So he responded, yes. The doctor asked, which one? The yellow one. Did you fall or get hit? Nope. It just happened suddenly by itself. So the doctor said, okay, let's stop the bleeding first. And he stopped the bleeding using nasal packing and epinephrine. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, the doctor thought, hmm, spontaneous bleeding is weird. I should take some more history. Do you take any other medications? Well, yes, I take five pills a day. What are those pills? They're for my heart stent. The second pill is a blood thinner called Plavix. Two more pills are for my cholesterol, but I forgot what's the fifth one. When was the stent inserted? A year ago, he said. Hmm, so he's been taking them for a while, so why bleed now? Something must have changed. Did you have any illnesses or receive any new medications or antibiotics? Nope. Any changes in your doses or compensation for missed days? Oh yeah. Two days ago, I missed my pills, so yesterday I took double the dose. Okay, so after finishing this, I really like this case for many good reasons. Number one is that it displayed the importance of the medical history, especially in this case, we are talking about the drug and medication history. Um, when the patient came, it was an obvious question to ask him, are you on any anticoagulants or antiplatelets? And the patient responded, yes, he was taking this yellow pill, which is um, aspirin, okay? But there is one little thing that actually I changed in the uh, story that I told you guys, is that it was not a single doctor in the emergency room treating him, but it was multiple ones. So the first one, when he found out that he was taking aspirin, he said, okay. Then he started cleaning his nose, he treated him, and and he left. The second lesson to be learned is that premature closure can also happen in such a case. Premature closure was found here because the first treating physician, although in the story you only saw one, but there were actually multiple, the, the first physician who treated him didn't ask any further questions because he was persuaded that aspirin fully explained the presentation of the patient, which is nosebleed or epistaxis. However, a second physician, also in the emergency room, who was also seeing this patient, he was not persuaded as, as much, and he thought we should still ask about other, other, other medications. So he did, and he asked them, are you taking any other medications? He said, well, yes, five. And he asked, well, tell me about them. So the second one was another antiplatelet, which was clopidogrel or Plavix. So now it makes much more sense that this patient is suffering from bleeding because he's now on two antiplatelet medications. But the history shows that this is not a new medication. He's been taking them for around a year. So why is he bleeding just right now? So the physician again thought and said, well, I should ask if there's any other change. So he did, because there could be some drug interactions, some other medications or antibiotics that he took, or um, some liver or kidney injury that resulted in the toxicity that, uh, that, that can result in bleeding. So he asked them, did you have any other changes? He said, no. But he said, have you changed any doses? Or did you miss any days? And then, you know, think that you would like to compensate for that by taking another dose and suddenly the patient said yes and he actually missed a dose and he he wanted to compensate for that he took double the dose which resulted in the next day in his epistaxis and severe uh, nose bleeding and blood loss uh, so this is the second lesson premature closure the first physician made the mistake that he found 
aspirin, he thought it explained his symptoms, and then he stopped. While the second doctor, he asked a second question, which, which is, are you on any other medications? When he said yes, he could have fell again into premature collusion and said, well, okay, two antiplatelets can make you bleed and then stop. But no, again, he said, let's ask a third question. Did anything change in your medication history? And he said yes, which was his extra dosing. And now it fully explained his symptoms. Does that mean that aspirin alone cannot make you bleed? Or aspirin and clopidogrel alone in their regular doses cannot make anyone bleed? Of course not. Anything in medicine is possible. And it could have been the case in, in this patient. However, it, it makes much more sense to, before making any such decision that aspirin by itself made the bleed, you should always continue until the end of the history. Okay, don't stop at one place, continue until the end before you make your decisions. So that's the second lesson that we learn is to avoid premature closure and always take a full history regardless of the findings. Even if you have one positive finding, which was aspirin in this case, even if you have two positive findings, which is aspirin and Plavix or clopidogrel, you should still continue until the end. In this case, we had three positive findings one antiplatelet, a second antiplatelet, and then an error in the dosing. So that's the second lesson, to avoid premature closure. And if you want to learn more about premature closure, uh, you know, you can find the video, I think I'll put it here, about premature closure that I'm, I talked about in our channel previously in detail. Now, the third lesson to be learned is that uh, this is directly relevant to counseling our patients. Okay, after finding this cause for his nosebleed, we were able to counsel him and tell him that in the future, you should not uh, take any extra doses. If you miss a day, just ignore it and proceed as usual. Otherwise, if, you, if we did not educate him about this case, this could have happened again and again and put him at greater risk uh, of life-threatening bleeding. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this case. Again, the premature closure video can give you more information about premature closure and how it can affect medicine. So until the next time.